Hi, good morning. My name's Sharon. I'll be your moderator for the session today. Just an FYI, we will keep all participant mics muted and all video stopped for participants. It um, supports the efficient running of the Zoom platform when we have large groups of people attending the sessions. We're going to get started in about um, three minutes. Thank you. Okay, good morning. My name's Sharon with Team Dynamics. I'm going to be the moderator for your session this morning. Thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for joining us for the 2020 Teacher Leader Summit virtual series. This is session A122. And you can see on the shared screen the title of your session, ELA Guidebooks for grades 9 through 12, 2020. If you have any questions or comments as we're going through the session, please post them in the chat box and um, we will try to address your concerns as they happen. And I'm going to keep all video stopped and mics muted for participants because it helps facilitate the efficient running of the Zoom platform. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the chat. I'm going to turn everything over to your presenters for the session now. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Holly Jesse, and I work for the Louisiana Department of Education on the ELA content team. And I'm going to introduce your host for today, our high school specialist, Emily Kaiser. Thank you, Holly. Um, welcome everybody today. I'm so excited to get to share all of the little details about Louisiana Curriculum Hub and the 912 guidebooks. Um, as we, you know, release this to the public, um, I know you've been anticipating it for quite a while and very excited to share this with you today. And hopefully I can answer some questions um, toward the end of the presentation. Um, and you'll leave here with a lot more information. Um, so I, we have a poll to get us started. So just to kind of get an idea of who all is here today, um, if you could fill out this poll, just let us know what, what is your role within your school? And at this point, what is your experience with Louisiana Curriculum Hub? Have you been able to visit it? Let me give you a couple minutes to answer this poll. And 
If you'll answer in the poll, please. So we can get an idea. I can see an overview of who all is with us today. Okay, it looks like we have uh, a lot of teachers with us today, um, which is great. Um, and um, some school leaders and uh, instructional coaches. Um, I'm really excited for some of the teachers to see this because I know you guys are gonna be the ones on the ground using this every day. So I'm really excited to share this with you. So um, we're gonna kind of move from the poll over to the presentation and get started. So our objectives for this presentation today is our three main objectives. First of all, we're just going to talk about briefly the need for high quality curriculum. I know Louisiana has really pushed this, so you guys have heard a lot about this, but we're going to do a quick review of that. Um, talk about some of the design principles about the new high school program. And then the part that I'm most excited about is uh, we're going to take a deep dive into the platform through website look at a unit, look at sections, look at the lessons, um, and kind of talk about how you're going to use that site as you, as you teach your classes. So um, this is our plan for the next hour. So curriculum, we have um, in Louisiana, one of our main goals for the last several years has been to make sure that there's high quality curriculum in every classroom throughout the state. And the reason this matters is because with scale, I mean, sorry, with curriculum, you allow quality materials to be spread out through an entire state. Um, a lot of times teachers are in the past have been working in isolation, creating materials, creating units, but there's no way to scale that out to a school or to a district or let alone a state. Curriculum allows materials to be scaled out in a large, in a large way. Um, research over the last 10 years or so has suggested that um, training and teacher preparation alone doesn't have the impact of having high quality materials and curriculum in the hands of teachers and in front of students every day. Um, and then the last one, which I feel like is kind of one of the highlighted features of the new 912 guidebooks is this idea that they're are embedded supports in that unit. Um, it's no longer up to teachers to figure out how to support their students who are struggling. The curriculum has that embedded in the materials for them. So this is kind of just the reasons that curriculum matters. Last spring in 2019, um, the RAND company did a survey throughout Louisiana to see, to see what was happening in classrooms. They did it in Louisiana and they did it in several other states. So what they were looking for to, was to see if schools were using high quality curriculum um, in their ELA classrooms. As you can see from this chart right here, um, Louisiana is kind of leading the way in this. Um, you know, some of these states that generally, you know, are highlighted as really important places of educational innovation are still kind of behind the curve with this, but we are at 71% in Louisiana, and that's that's a big jump um, from what this was last like 10 years ago. So Louisiana is on the right track with this. But once we started like looking at this, these numbers a little bit closer, and we saw the breakdown of breakdown by grade, we started noticing that there was a definite difference between what was happening in 
kindergarten through eighth grade classrooms and what was happening into high school classrooms. Um, as you can see from this breakdown, while 79% of elementary school teachers were using standards aligned ELA materials, we were getting about 22% of high school teachers using these same materials or high school aligned ELA materials. Um, we kind of took a step back as a department and as um, an ELA content team and tried to decide what was going on with that and looked at the materials that were available to high school students and high school teachers and realized that you know we needed to meet the specific needs of high school teachers. So we decided to try to build a curriculum that would establish a very strong learning community as these students are about to head out into the real world and work in teams and work you know, in companies where they're gonna be expected to work together and not just in isolation. Um, we wanted a curriculum that was gonna not only build students' knowledge of literature, but also knowledge about topics and um, subject areas that might lead them to perhaps future interests, future careers. Um, the ELA classroom is, you know, not just about learning text, it's also about learning about the world. Um, and we wanted to make sure that our materials reflected that. Um, we wanted to also provide some flexibility in these units and these lessons, which would mean that we would add some optional supports in there. And you'll see that as we dive in, into the Louisiana Curriculum Hub, um, because we recognize that our current guidebooks lacked the supports that teachers needed to, to reach those students who were struggling. Um, we also wanted to be able to provide some information, some guidance to help high school teachers figure out how to adjust lessons to meet their students' needs. Again, adding in supports or for some students adding in extension activities. Um, we also wanted to tighten up the system of instruction and assessment and pull out specific places in units where teachers can stop, take the temperature of the classroom, and you know, figure out if they needed to add some optional activities to build knowledge, to build some skills before they get to the end of the unit. So we wanted to provide some stop, stopping points along the way. So as you can see, this kind of um, sums up what the ELA guidebooks nine through 12 help students do. Explore central questions that connect units in a year long pathway, examine text by diverse authors, about substantive topics. Um, you know, this was a, a piece that we got feedback from teachers often about the original ELA guidebooks uh, for high school is that they, they did not reflect a multitude of voices. And we really tried hard by this time to pick text that reflected a multitude of voices um, across different types of, of text as well. Um, we wanted to make sure students are engaged in reading, discussing, writing, presenting, as they should be doing in all ELA classrooms. And again, have that comprehensive integrated instruction and assessment. So I'm just gonna to touch on these really quickly. So with, in order to build this learning community, we have uh, uh, places in the units where students are working independently in pairs, collaboratively. Um, they also have opportunities to do some independent work or work in a group to explore topics that they're interested in at the end of the year. Um, that kind of builds that learning community. Uh, knowledge, the text sets represent not only thematically linked text, but also text that build knowledge about certain areas. And we'll kind of look at that when we look at the, the deep dive into the unit. Choice and flexibility. Um, as a former high school teacher, I recognize the, um, the need for teachers in high school to be a little bit more flexible. Um, I know, you know, you would show up on Monday and find out Tuesday there was going to be a pep rally, Thursday there was going to be an assembly, and Friday half your classes were going to be gone on a field trip. Um, and you need a flexibility that reflects the ever-changing dynamic of a high school classroom. And, you know, we thought about that as we tried to make multiple units available for, for teachers to have choice in what they're teaching, but also once they're in that unit, um, some choice about what they think their students need to focus on in order to meet the needs of, of the unit. Um, these images, you'll see these mirrored on Louisiana Curriculum Hub, they represent each school, each grade band. 
And each of these grade bands is linked by a theme or a, an, a general idea. So with ninth grade, we have um, this idea of change and it's looped through multiple units. Um, with 10th grade, it's the idea of stories and, and, and multiple stories and what that means and how that affects our perception of things. 11th grade is kind of linked by this idea of America and all the different parts of America. Um, and then not 12th grade, as students are about to leave high school and go into the world, they're going to be looking at the systems that kind of like are in charge of their lives. So through 1984 with government, um, education, those kind of systems that are in affecting their, uh, their lives as students and as future adults. So these are the units, and some of you have seen this before, and some of you may have not. These are the units for each grade level. So with ninth grade, you see it's a photojournalism, Lesson Book for Dying, Joy Luck Club, Romeo and Juliet, and Teenage Brain. One thing to look about, look, look at for each grade level is that each grade level contains um, what we're calling a legacy unit. And that's a unit that is connected to the 2.0 versions of ELA guidebooks that are currently on LearnZillion. Um, these units will have the same anchor text as those units from, um, from LearnZillion, but will oftentimes have a different focus. Um, so for ninth grade, that's Romeo and Juliet. Um, also kind of the teenage brain, we've pulled out the pieces about the teenage brain from the original Romeo and Juliet unit and made that its own unit. Um, Cause a lot of the feedback we got was that was, that was a lot for teachers to cover, a big chunky piece of literature and then also a, a piece of science. So we separated those two. With 10th grade, you've got um, Henrietta Lacks, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks is our legacy unit there. Um, 11th grade Gatsby, the, although Gatsby was not technically the anchor text of the 2.0 unit, it is now. Um, and then 12th grade Hamlet is your legacy unit. You'll also notice that development five unit is generally going to be an argumentative unit, um, a unit that's anchored in a topic rather than um, a piece of literature. Um, while those units may have literature in them, they are heavily informational and usually linked to one of the other units in the grade band. So um, I'm gonna pull up another poll at this point. And this is just kind of an overview about what units you're interested in um, for each grade level. I'm gonna give you guys a second to fill out that poll. Give y'all about one more minute. Um, see a lot of people excited about Hamilton. flip to the next slide as you guys are finishing up your poll. Um, because of the recent events um, with COVID-19 affecting so many, all the schools and all the teachers and all the classrooms in Louisiana, um, and the fact that our ELA content team is technically a publisher of guidebooks and 
needs to come to the assistance of teachers in helping them devise ways to teach guidebooks across distance learning, um, a distance learning environment. We had to make some adjustments about which units were coming out this year and which units were coming out next year. And um, believe me when I say that we really uh, thought long and hard about this, but we felt that the, the need, the biggest need right now is to support you guys as you figure out how to navigate this very strange time to be an educator through some support with distance learning. And um, those of you who know the numbers of people on our ELA content team will understand why we had to make some decisions. There's only three of us. Uh, so we had to kind of adjust some of these. So you'll see that one unit in each grade level was pushed back to being released next year. So that's photojournalism, bioethics, film, and in the time of the butterflies. And that being said, if your, your teachers, if you're a instructional coach or, um, you know, an API, or if you're a teacher and you have a voice in the decisions about what your, your district is going to be teaching, um, and you are, for instance, really interested in teaching in the time of the butterflies, but it is not ready this year. Um, so therefore, you know, the unit reader is not available for purchase, nor is it on American Reading Company's text portal. Our suggestion in that instance is to go ahead and teach the two other units that you were planning on teaching this year. So for instance, if you were going to teach Hamlet in 1984 and Butterflies, this year just teach Hamlet 1984 and then you know, really hone in on learning the program, learning um, you know, how the curriculum hub works. And then you know, in 2021, 2022, you can incorporate the, that in the time of the butterflies unit as it rolls out. Um, we just don't want districts to spend money and resources on units that, you know, their teachers don't really want to teach. Like we don't want you to, you know, go ahead and just buy a unit to fill up that third unit spot this year when, you know, that's not necessarily the unit that your teachers want to teach or that you guys as teachers want to teach. So, um, you know, that's just some, just a little side note there. Um, so as of right now, you can see this first, this available now column, those are the units that are available now. I will make a little addendum that 1984 was put on the platform this morning. So it's there. Um, you know, the other units are going to come out through June and then we have July units. And then as the year rolls out and we kind of get more of a handle on distance learning, we can start turning our focus to those, those last units in each grade level so there is a complete uh, a complete year of choice for teachers so this design is a bit different um, from those of you who are used to teaching uh, guidebooks as they are on LearnZillion right now one of the main differences is this coherent system of instruction and assessment um, as of right now each unit on LearnZillion guidebooks has a culminating task an extension task and a cold read task. And most of the time those assessments all fall in the last two weeks of the unit. This creates a lot of problem for teachers um, because that's a whole lot of grading when you have 100 plus students at the end of the at the end of the unit. Um, it also really doesn't flag problems or or gaps in knowledge or gaps in skills for teachers until they get to the end of the unit. And we were realizing that that's you know probably not the best practice to help teachers really reach the needs of their students. So what we have created here is a way for teachers to monitor, diagnose, and evaluate their students throughout the unit instead of just doing it at the end. Um, and we've done that through creating um, shorter or fewer numbers of sections and an assessment at the end of each section called a section diagnostic. Um, and also those section diagnostics reflect what the culminating task is, as well as also reflects the central question. So you can see each of these units um, has a central question. The culminating task, task is related to the central question. And then to even back further, each section diagnostic is going to prepare the students in some way to answer that culminating task question at the end of the unit. Um, one of the other things to note, and as you're thinking about what units you want to teach, some of the culminating tasks are literary analysis, some are more expository, uh, you know, research type essays, some are presentations. 
So, you know, some are narratives. We have um, several units that end in a narrative task. So, you know, that's something to think about as you are considering what units to teach is, you know, what, what mixture of culminating tasks would you like to have for your, for your students? So I'm going to take a little, we're going to take a walk through the Louisiana Curriculum Hub. Um, now that we've got all the, the theory behind what we're doing, um, we're going to look at the nuts and bolts. So um, I'm going to actually navigate to the Louisiana Curriculum Hub page, um, and you should be able to access that. It's going to be dropped, the link is going to be dropped in the chat. And some of you have already been there based on the poll. Um, so this is the homepage for Louisiana Curriculum Hub. You can see that we actually have all grades listed right now. Um, if you would like to know more about that, we have some more sessions about that coming up um, and we'll release those recordings soon. Um, but I'm not gonna get into that today, but it is pretty exciting. You'll have a curriculum guide for the program. Um, I do wanna find that this curriculum guide is um, probably going to be edited a little bit in the next week or so, just to flag that for you. Um, we wanted to give it one more once over before you know, districts really got into planning. Um, this link will bring you to purchasing so you can get to American Reading Company's portal and you can get to Xanadu's portal to order your materials. You go to the grade level that you want to go to. We're gonna take a walk through Lesson Before Dying, but this page, once all the units are listed, will have each unit for the grade level. You can navigate either by this drop down. Or if you go back to the home page, you can just click the orange buttons. So this grade overview will list each title of, of the units and also list the central question for that unit. So you can kind of have an idea. We are gonna walk through Lesson Before Dying and it looked like 34% of you were excited about that. So I feel like that might be a good, a good choice. Um, I want to start by looking at the assessments. Um, actually, let's back up before there. I just want to orient you to the overview page for each for each unit. The overview page for each unit will have the title of the unit, the central question, and a very brief overview of that unit. Um, it will list the anchor text, the central question, and what students will eventually answer in the culminating task. So this is just a brief overview, um, just to get a, a feel of the unit. You will also have four buttons right here for each unit. One will have the evaluation plan, which is the assessments for the unit. We'll walk, we're gonna walk through all of these. So I'm just gonna give you an overview and then we'll go a little bit more deep. Um, the teaching guide, which is something kind of new. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. The text list and the list of materials for the unit, the handouts that you'll use for the, for the unit. And then you'll have buttons here to bring you to each section. But we'll first start by looking at the assessments. If you click on this button, it will open a PDF. And this is called the evaluation plan. The evaluation plan will start with an overview of the system, of, of our evaluation system, what it means to monitor, diagnose, and evaluate. Um, each evaluation plan starts off with this, just so teachers are familiar with how this program works as far as evaluation, because it is a little different than Lens Alien. So once you get down to diagnose, this evaluation plan will list the section diagnostics for the unit. It'll tell you the section and the lesson number, where the section diagnostic lives. It will give you the, the, the section diagnostic prompt. Um, again, sometimes these are gonna be questions uh, that students answer in written response. Sometimes they're gonna be discussions whole class. Um, sometimes they're gonna even be like little miniature presentations. So section diagnostic products kind of vary, but each section diagnostic students will have to demonstrate knowledge and skill. And if you look over on this last column, the first paragraph will list the knowledge that students are expected to exhibit through this section diagnostic, and then also the skills that stu students are expected to, to exhibit, and also how these connect to the culminating task. Um, a lot of times we've asked you 
if you've been through PDU with us before, we've asked you kind of do, to do this work on your own. Um, we've kind of pulled this out a little bit for you. These section diagnostics will also have um, a section diagnostic checklist with them um, in the units, and I'll show you what that looks like um, once we go into a lesson. So, you know, you'll have a, a way to check that off. So you'll have the section diagnostics, the questions and the connections. And then also you'll have the culminating task prompt, the culminating task rubric, and the culminating task exem exemplar for that unit. So this is the evaluation plan. And this is probably the best place to start to get a feel for what this unit looks like. Um, you know, like to think about begin with the end in mind and you know, start at the culminating task then look at the section diagnostics. You should be able to see a close connection and um, you, know, you can go from there. So the next piece would be your materials. So when you click on the materials, they will actually download as a zip file. And I'm gonna to try to share this with you. It might not show up just because it's a, it's a pop-up. So I'm gonna to try to stop sharing and then share again and see if you guys can see it. So if you can't see it, what it does is it, it downloads as a zip folder. And in that folder, it will list all of the handouts that students will need for that unit. So if you choose to print out your own handouts, you can print out each of those PDFs and make handouts for students. Um, if you are working on planning, probably a good idea to print these out for yourself and kind of have those on hand as you're going through the unit. Um, these are file named by the section number, the lesson number, and the activity that they first appear. So that's kind of how you know where these fall in the unit. They're also linked to those activities. The last document in that zip file will be the reference guides. These reference guides are new to this, this program. We haven't used this before. Reference guides are basically a very big PDF. And in that PDF, it will be like one page documents that explain commonly discussed terms in an ELA classroom. For instance, there is um, a reference guide about theme. There's a reference guide about annotation. There's a reference guide about um, avoiding plagiarism. So we have basically taken all those many lessons that you have to give students and put those into one document. So if a student is doing an activity and they are, you know, I can't remember how to cite, you know, an article, they can just go to the avoiding plagiarism, plagiarism reference guide and figure out how to do that citation. Um, they obviously might need a little help from you too, but we were trying to make kind of a one-stop shop for students to have on hand to go over things that they might have problems with. Um, if you are in a one-to-one -one situation, students can probably save this on their home screen um, because it is a very big document. Um, Xanadu also offers the ability to print those for you if you, you need to have a class set. Another note about materials, um, like I said, these are all available on the website. You can print them out, make copies of yourself of, for, for yourself, for your students. Um, but you can also, if you don't wanna deal with the paper cost, Xanadu does offer student materials um, as part of their, their service to us um, that you can go on and purchase. So they offer that. They also are offering the, the reference guides as an option for a purchase. The next button is your text list. So this will list each text in the unit, the author, the genre. It will also tell you which part of the guidebook it's used in and whether that text is used in a core activity or an optional activity. Um, the last column will tell you where you can find that, that uh, text. If it says the unit reader, those are the unit readers that you purchased through Xanadu. Um, digital access, the text will be linked so teachers can show that usually those are going to be videos ted talks things like that if it says novel those are the texts that you would buy from american reading company um, one thing to note in order to do in order to to teach these units 
you need to have students need copies of the anchor text and the unit reader text. So, um, you know, just remember that I know, you know, there's a lot going on right now, but, you know, in order to teach these units, you need to make sure that students have copies of those unit readers and those anchor text. And what we have learned from this distance learning piece is that um, oftentimes if you have class sets of these, it does not translate to distance learning very easily. So we really are encouraging districts to buy unit readers and novels for each of their students um, in order to allow instruction to continue happening if we do have to go back to distance learning. The last piece on these buttons are the teaching guide. And this is something that's kind of new. And it has been born out of the department's push for planning and to try to get teachers to move and districts to move away from their lesson plan, you know, forms that teachers have to fill out and turn in every Monday morning um, and shift over to more of an annotation piece of, of doing lesson plans. So if you click on this teaching guide button, it will open a very long PDF. And what this PDF has is a list of, or it has all of the, the teacher notes and the student notes for every single lesson and activity in the entire unit. So each lesson starts right here with your, um, the description of the lesson and the look fors, which we're gonna go into in a little bit. And the way we formatted this is each activity has its own page. So you're all, you can see what the students will, you know, what the students are being asked to do. And then you can see your notes as a teacher. Um, if you have a PDF writer, I think that you could easily like, you know, write on this as a PDF. You could also print it out and write on it, you know, as you're, as you're planning, um, you know, as you're annotating your lessons to get ready to teach. You can flag which questions seem to be questions that you're going to want to ask students or if there is some kind of adjustment you would need to make to time. Um, if there is some kind of adjustment that you would need to make, um, you know, whether or not you're going to do one of the optional activities. Let me find an optional. It's the first lesson of the unit, so it probably won't have an optional activity. You'll see some optional, act anyway, you'll see some optional activities and you can kind of flag whether you're planning to teach that or not, uh, depending on what the needs of your students are. Um, you can see all these possible supports. You know, you can flag for yourself which possible supports you want to use during that lesson. But um, we're hoping that this teacher guide allows you to have um, those materials that are on the screen on your hand, in your hand, so you can actually plan and you can make notes. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more um, a way for you to easily move through these units. So that is these are that's all of the buttons, all the pieces that you can um, you have to start working in a unit. The next thing I want to go through is a section. So we're going to click on. I'm actually going to go to section three and kind of show you how the breakdown of these sections look like. So each section overview page will have a description of the section. Most of the time, that section description is going to tell you which text students are going to read during that section. Another place to find that is your text overview document because it'll tell you which section um, each text appears in, whether that text appears in multiple lessons. Um, so you kind of know what to have on hand in, you know, where to tell students to look to find things. Um, it also will list the section diagnostic. Um, right here you see students will write a response to the following question and it has the question. So you know going into the section where your students are headed. And then this overview page offers you a little snapshot of each lesson. It gives you a lesson description. And you can see that there are six lessons. It tells you which, what is going on in each lesson. Um, if you want to know what, which lesson the section diagnostic appears in, you can look back at your evaluation plan. That's, that's where you would find that information. Okay, so if I'm going to go into the into the lesson, this is a lesson overview. So this would be you know a days of a day of instruction. You have a couple pieces to this. 
you have the same lesson overview that you saw on the blue boxes on the section overview. Then you have your lesson look fours. Um, the way we are doing look fours um, in this, or we're, we're calling look fours something a little different than we've called in the past. Each lesson will have two questions. And the first question will be based on the knowledge that students are expected to gain over the course of that lesson. And the second question will relate to the skill that a student should exhibit through that, that lesson. This is kind of where teachers should focus as they're, as they're doing that daily monitoring with students to figure out if, you know, if their students are struggling with knowledge, are they struggling with the skill? These lesson look fours are going to be what teachers will use to guide, you know, their read of the room. Um, oftentimes, I know that as a teacher, I felt like students needed to get so much out of a lesson. They needed to get all these pieces of knowledge and they needed to be able to do all of these things. And what we try to do is really focus that in to the two most important pieces for that lesson in order to, you know, have more targeted evaluation through this unit. Um, I'm sorry, through the units. So, you know, make sure that you, you pay attention to these lex lesson look fours. Um, I think if I was using these units, I would have students look at those two and do some self evaluation. Um, so they know what they're supposed to be getting out of these units. As you look at the lesson overview page, you can see a description of each activity. If an activity is core, it is going to have a filled in circle. If an activity is optional, it is going to have a kind of an open circle. And um, we're going to talk about the purpose behind those optional activities in a second. And you'll see the duration. It gives you some time. Um, obviously, lessons that have more optional activities will have more, more activity numbers. Um, most lessons have between four and seven activities. Um, some go a little bit more than that. Um, if you were going to include all the optional activities in a lesson, that lesson would last more than one class period if we're talking about a traditional 50 minute class, 53 minute class in high school. So that is one of those things that that teachers should be doing or that you guys can do before you know your teaching is, is figure out like if I'm if I'm going to include these optional activities, then you know this lesson might take two days rather than just one day. Um, so that's something to think about. So you can see here like what text they're, they're going to be reading in each activity, you know, what the purpose of that is. Once I'm ready to start instruction, I would click on that activity. You can see your teaching notes are here. The student directions are here. And any materials, including a text or a handout, would be linked under materials tab. Um, these links for text are not clickable because these are texts that you have to purchase. They are not, you know, you can't link to them. Even the digital access text are not going to be linked here. So, you know, don't try to, to link it there. That's why they're linked in the text access document. Um, so you'd have your student instructions here, the teacher instructions here. In these teacher instructions, you can see you have options for support. You have some guiding questions. You have some support for, you know, an audio recording of a text. If you were going to display this, you can display it like this or you can expand the screen that way. Um, what I have heard some teachers do is that they run, what student teachers did in the pilot, I'm sorry, is that they ran their classroom using this expanded version and they had their, an a non-expanded version on like a, a tablet or a separate computer to, um, or a hard copy of the teacher notes to kind of go through the lesson and still have your teacher notes there. But you do always have the option to display it this way as, as well. Um, this is a kind of a nice place to start with each activity. It's kind of just orienting your students as to what they're doing. One thing I wanna point out is that these are very much, like all of the instruction is student facing. So, you know, students should be able to read these directions and know exactly what they're going to be doing. Whereas before, most of the time the teacher notes were scripted. They told you what to say, when to say, say it. You'll notice that there's no scripting in these teacher notes. Um, the directions are all facing the students. So the student is kind of like, you know, 
has those directions in front of them and, and can you can walk them through it. But you'll notice there is no scripting in the teacher notes. Um, you can maneuver your way through or you know guide yourself through this these this lesson through these buttons at the top. The other option you have are these little arrows at the bottom. They'll do the same thing. Notice that when you're going to be doing a more complex activity, um, this one is an optional activity for, for understanding and for, um, for meaning. You might have some more supports here. Um, and you would choose to do this if you felt like students needed a little bit more support with meaning. You can see we go through. If there was a handout attached to this activity, it would be listed here as well, and that would be a clickable PDF. I'm going to show you that in a second. Again, here, here are our teacher notes. Notice as the, the activities get a little bit more complex, as you kind of move and deepen your understanding through the text, there's going to be usually more teacher notes to support students. Okay, and see this one has a handout attached to it. This is a, we're calling these tools, you know, they're handouts. And if I was teaching and I wanted to kind of display this tool just to remind students what it looks like, I could click PDF and it would open the PDF. So you could go through it that way. Um, you also might want to have your own copy and, you know, do it that way as well. So I also wanted to show you a lesson that had more optional activities. So I'm going to click over to lesson four. And you can see this lesson has many more activities because it has two optional activities kind of in the middle. Um, we have built these optional activities around uh, several different supports. Sometimes it's support for meaning. Sometimes it's support for reading fluency. Sometimes it's support for language um, with vocabulary or sentence structure. You can see that this one right here, students are annotating a page and focusing on details that develop a theme. That is going to be a support for meaning to allow students more practice with understanding theme to help them move toward that section diagnostic. And right here, students will analyze the structure of a sentence. So they're looking at language right here, but they also are looking at meaning with this activity as well, because that sentence is also connected to the development of themes. So students get practice with, with language, with sentence structure, and also with theme. So that's how these optional activities work. Um, you know, deciding which optional activity to include will oftentimes depend on how your students are doing within that, the, you know, the day before or even how they did on section diagnostic. Those are choices that, you know, you, you need to probably make before the, the class starts. However, if you were in the middle of an activity, let's say you're doing this and you have a student, you're on activity three and you realize that you have some students not understanding it, that's when you would go over here to the possible supports and see if there were some things you could do in the moment to support those students if they were struggling um, with an activity. Okay, um, I am actually gonna go back to the presentation because I have a couple more things to share with you guys. Um, the other thing that we have not talked about in many of our other presentations talking about um, the, the new guidebooks is the application unit. Um, we have decided designed these this program to have two different kinds of units. One is a development unit and one is an application unit. Um, the development unit would be like you just saw with lesson before dying, where you know it is based around an anchor text or an anchor topic. Students, you know, do that work, they do the section diagnostics, they do the culminating task, and they have, um, you know, read all the text. At the end of each school year, we have a four week application unit. And that application unit actually is going to be, um, it can either be an independent research study, or it can be a partner, partner research project or a group research project. The way students select topics for that is that at the end of each development unit, they are going to 
look at a list of possible topics related to the unit that they they just completed. So for instance, if my 11th grade students just finished the Great Gatsby unit, the last day of that unit, after we've done the culminating task, we've kind of wrapped up the unit, students will get out um, the culminating task tool for the application unit, which will be on the platform. And students will, you know, will have that. I probably wouldn't let students hold on to it the whole school year. I'd probably hang on to it for them and just hand it out to them when we're going to be doing this. Um, and they would have possible topics and possible products that connect to the unit they just finished. So for instance, um, the central question for the Gatsby unit is how do perceptions influence people's lives? So some possible topics that a student, if they wanted to do, to do their application task based around the Gatsby unit, they could explore the biological process of sites or like a scientific piece. They could explore the lost generation and its impact on America, which is a kind of a social studies piece. The idea of the American dream, which is kind of a social studies literary piece or they might have some ideas of their own for something that they would want to research based on the Gatsby unit. Along with possible topics, they have possible products. So students aren't just all writing essays. They are, they could develop a multimedia presentation explaining something. They could create a podcast that presents generational views of the American dream, um, analyze two articles that portray different perspectives about the American dream. Um, the purpose of this application unit is to allow students to explore a topic that is connected to something they've studied over the school year, um, but that will allow them to build knowledge about in maybe a subject area that they would normally not get to study in English class. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like on the platform. This is actually um, our super secret uh, platform. It's not on the production platform yet. This is just on staging, but I did want to give you a sneak peek of what this looks like. Um, so you have an idea because we've talked about it, but we haven't really gotten to share a lot about it yet. Um, when this is released to the production platform, you'll have materials here. You'll have a teacher guide. You will not have text because students will be doing research. And so their text or the text that they generate. Um, and and you will have an evaluation plan because students will have section diagnostics to do during this, but they will all be connected to their research project. So I'm going to kind of just walk you through each section so you can see what this looks like. There are five sections. Um, this is meant to be about a four or five week unit and meant to be done at the end of the school year. Um, the end of the school year at high school, everybody knows is insane um, with testing and all kinds of stuff. This is meant to be something that students can do on their own doesn't require a ton of teacher instruction. Um, your role during this time is going to be more of support as students walk their way through the research process. Obviously, ninth and 10th graders may need a little bit more support, hopefully by 11th and 12th grade. Um, after a couple of years with this program, they're used to this and they understand what they're expected to do during the application task. So um, you can see section one. Um, it's just kind of understanding the task. They would look at all of those possible tasks that they have explored through the school year. Like, let's say they did Gatsby and they did Friday Night Lights. And then the third unit they did was Warmth of Other Suns. And they look at all of the possible tasks and, and um, I'm sorry, possible topics and tasks. And they pick one that they're interested in researching, pick one product that they want to do. And this whole first week would be spent researching that topic, figuring out what it is that, you know, what specific piece of information that they would want to do. Notice that these still have activities, but they're they're shorter because a lot of this is going to be research. Go back to section one. So you notice that the section diagnostic for this first section would be to create a plan for conducting additional research. So they're still having to turn something in as a section diagnostic, but it is connected back to their research project. Section two would be outlining, would be continuing conducting research, brainstorming about what their product would be. Um, section three is generally gonna be drafting those products. Now drafting could be actually writing, drafting could be making a presentation, drafting could be recording a podcast, videotaping could be you know a lot of different things. Um, 
and again, see that the section diagnostic is the draft of their culminating task product. So this reflects those of you who've done research projects with your kids before, you know, you have to set these like little stop points in the research project to make sure that they're on task. Section diagnostics in the application unit are, are those stopping points. And then section four, as you imagine, would be the final draft. And then section five would be students presenting their projects to their class. Um, each student will present their, their project, even if they were writing a story, they're still going to like present it in a way that allows the other students to share in the knowledge that they've gained. It also gives you um, a chance to be able to do some grading kind of on the fly right there. Um, so students can, you know, not only see what their classmates have done, but also share the knowledge that they're hopefully proud that they've gained as they've, as they've worked through that. So um, this is the application unit. There will be one for each grade level. The activities and the lessons will be very similar across grade levels. The change will be, the difference between grade levels will be the topics because they will be linked to those development units from that grade level. Um, these application units will most likely be on the production site, be on Louisiana Curriculum Hub um, in the month of June. So kind of look for those as they get uploaded. Um, we're very close to getting those ready. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And we, because we're almost at time. Um, just a reminder, in order to teach these units, you um, have to secure the novels through American Reading Company and the unit readers through Xanadu. Some units do not have a novel um, because they are based around a topic that would be um, uh, the teen brain in ninth grade. In 11th grade, it would be, um, let's see, I can't remember what the 11th grade unit is. Home ownership only has a unit reader um, and artificial intelligence only has a unit reader. So if you're on American Reading Company and you have a, a unit you wanna teach and there isn't a novel available, it is likely because there is no novel for that unit. Um, and they would just use unit readers. So, um, you know, just a reminder that you need to secure text access in order to teach these units. This is our ELA guidebooks um, email. Um, I know I've heard from some of you uh, through this email before. If you have questions, either after this presentation or as you're in the, in the unit or you know, you notice something um, or, you know, you have a question about where to find something, you can email ELA, ELA, ELA guidebooks. Um, we are also going to offer a link that's a feedback form for you guys to fill out as you're going through a unit and you notice an error that we can correct, then that's something that, or if you notice that like this didn't work or this handout was missing or this handout, you know, there's some, some kind of little error. We're going to have a feedback link posted um, probably on the ELA guidebooks landing page on Louisiana Believes. We'll also put that in any newsletter communication through the districts um, for you guys to fill out as you go through the school year. Um, you know, we've gone through these units, but we know that, you know, the teachers are the ones who can really notice the pieces that are working and the pieces that are not working. Um, and we are always striving to try to make our products better. And so we like to hear from you. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. I know that you guys have been seeing my chat box pop up and I think Holly has been covering all of your questions. Um, if you have more questions after this, if you get onto the platform, you start navigating and realize that you you know, have some things that didn't get answered in the in the presentation, that's a place for you to, you can go to that ELA guidebooks email and, and send me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. If folks, we have about, I'm sorry, we have, this is Sharon. If we have, we have about four minutes left. If folks have questions, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, guys, um, I just wanted to address some things. I tried to keep up with the chat as much as possible. Thank you all so much for your participation and excitement about this new version of the ELA guidebooks. Um, we are very excited to share it with you. Um, a few people were asking me about um, 
signing up for the teacher leader newsletter. I do not have that link currently available, but if you email us at ELA guidebooks at la.gov, I will be sure to get you that, um, that form to sign up. That way you can keep up to date with all of the latest information that we are sending out to the field. Um, as far as professional development, our original plan was to give you three full days to dive into our theory and framework um, at the Teacher Leader Summit. But as we all know, that event went a little awry. We are working with Teaching Lab and School Kit to try and secure some kind of online training um, that we will offer to districts um, in July, but the details of that are still very rough. Um, if you are interested in purchasing the training from Teaching Lab or School Kit, I highly recommend reaching out to them. Both are a part of this development and are excited to partner with you and provide PD for your teachers this year. And I think a million questions came through um, while I was here. So if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question and I will try to field some more chats. And if not, you can always find us at elaguide.la.gov. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Emily. Hey, this is Sharon Holly. You uh, went out a little bit as you were uh, telling people the email. Could you say it again? ELA guidebooks at la.gov and we would greatly appreciate any session feedback from today using your SCED app. I'm gonna post that email in the chat box. I see some asking about the recorded presentation. Um, we will that I think all of the recorded presentations will be posted. Um. Um, we have a question. What is the contact info for purchasing the training in July? Um, that information can be found on the high school guidebook one pager, which we update pretty often. So if you do not have that, let me get you that. There is a section on teaching lab and school kit and professional development there. Whoops, I sent it out by the way. All right, and we have and another question. Uh, the PD vendor guide. Oops, sorry, I think I was talking over you, Holly, sorry. You can always also get PD information through our PD vendor guide. If you go to Louisiana Believes and just Google PD vendor guide, um, you will see all of our providers pop up. We have a, a quite, I know the answer to this one. Where can I found, find the PowerPoint? Um, I can attach the file, but it's on the Sketch app and it's on the teacher leader page. But I, I can attach it. All right, everyone, thank you again for joining us and reach out to us through email if you have any questions. Thank you so much.